All right. Hey, Alina, how are you? How are you, Alina? I'm good. Thanks, Jenny. Good. Thank, thank you. you for, uh, yeah, thank you for being here. It's funny because we were literally like just sitting on the, on the computer here a couple of hours ago. And uh, the reason why we'll come up in just a minute as, uh, as we go along here and Alina said something like two or three hours ago she's like so what what are we what are we recording what are we doing and I thought like oh this is so nice the trust the trust that goes in and also the the like mastery of the topic that there's nothing really to be be nervous about there's no trick questions or anything um so the reason that I asked Alina to come here and chat with me is so that I could have a bit of a a video to present to the people um, in my life and, and whoever else comes to watch the video about what exactly we are talking about when we hear the term somatic inquiry, more specifically, more specifically the Killaby inquiries. Um, so I have been in a program studying underneath Alina since, uh, since December, and it has been life changing and amazing. Um, and obviously, when you go through a transformation like that, the people around you start to notice and they're kind of like, like, what are you doing? What's up? How come you're not still pissed off at everyone all the time? Um, so <laughs> there's different reasons for that. But a large part of that has been uh, thanks to the training that I'm doing with Alina. And um, and part of that means that very soon, like at the moment, you might be watching this video. I am uh, now in the process of becoming uh, certified to facilitate Killaby inquiries. So that's another reason that I wanted to um, bring this to everybody's attention. If anyone's interested in being a little bit of a, a guinea pig in the upcoming uh, days and weeks, then I'll, uh, I'll explain a bit how. But first, I wanted to say what the, what the heck is somatic inquiry, if, we can, if that is not too broad of a question for you, Alina. <laughs> thanks, Jenny. Well, thanks for the invitation, and I'm honored to be here. And altogether, um, I was always excited, you know, Whatever, whenever our paths crossed and having you in the training, I'm like, yay, finally, a real deal <laughs> as well <laughs> goes around. So so that's wonderful. And I'm super excited for you to, to become a certified facilitator soon. So um, yeah, somatic inquiry. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I would I would start with a very, very popular word right now, which is bypassing. And bypassing, we're hearing every, everywhere. And what does it really mean bypassing in, in, in this specific situation? It's when we've been trying to avoid really looking inside, inward, really attending what's really going on in our bodies for quite a long time. And we've learned so many ways to do that. Growing up, we learned to listen to authorities and our parents and what do we have to do with our life and so much conditioning going on. And then after that as well, the package of programming that was happening and unattended, just going on automatic autopilot, there was also a lot of escaping that started to happen, this kind of need to survive from the struggles and the difficulties of life. And then we started to find ways to escape. So it's addictions and uh, even just working, work workaholism, relationships, or or at least chasing some sort of ideal relationship, or even enlightenment, right? And chasing enlightenment and this kind of beautiful promises that everything's going to be perfect forever and after. When we just when we just understand who and what we are. Um, so, but the truth is, the beauty is, and of this particular work and somatic work is that. It brings us back exactly where we started to escape from. <laughs> so it re really brings us back to basically, I would say, you know, talking from my own direct experience, it's everything I was trying to escape from with spirituality, with seeking, with prior to spirituality, with seeking a specific style of life, of life, you know, chasing the the perfect dream and, and the perfect partner and the perfect everything that, you know, we just learn to be conditioned and not necessarily even following our heart. And we have no idea what's our heart even desires truly because it's just, there's so much going on and we never looked at it. So this somatic processing is for the first time is like, okay, let me stop, stop for a moment and really start noticing what's really going on. And there's so much going on unconsciously. 
there's so many memories from our childhood that are really staining our experience constantly. Really, so, in a sense, un, I, un, unstop, unfolding in a sense. Of yeah. Course. So. Thank you. I'm so happy you started with the word bypassing. This is, I was just sharing with Alina um, yesterday on my Facebook feed, my memories came up of one year ago, how I was ripping my hair out of my head, watching people around me with this idea of spiritual bypassing of like, you know, and here in Quebec, we had the rainbow, everything's going to be okay. I just was kind of looking around me, watching all these spiritual people who, who, and I can say even for myself, I mean, I discovered yoga at 16. I was teaching, I've been teaching yoga for 20 years, all of the different sorts of meditation, but I, I was still so fucking pissed off all of the time. And it's like, how can you do all of this work? And the reason you can do all this work and not actually ever get to it, just have that facade of like the perfect yoga teacher who's always calm um, is because of the bypassing. We're not actually addressing what's going on in a deeper level. So you were talking about traumas and then we're talking also in Kilby and Grace a lot these days um, uh, about uh, repression. So, um, and you use the word, uh, we came to this conversation talking about somatic inquiry. So it's an inquiry process. And if I start to explain, um, okay, so, so what is, what are you studying, Jenny? I'm like, oh, well, it, you know, it's inquiry and inquiry. Oh, like, um, like Byron Katie, like, yeah, sort of like Byron Katie that, you know, so there's little words, but, but there's also a somatic experience with uh, somatic uh, yeah, experience. I didn't mean actually to use that term, but we know the term somatic experiencing, but soma means the body anyway so it's it's a uh, I feel like we all have from especially if we're coming from the yoga world but even if not necessarily we all have a taste of all these things but this is the one thing that brings everything everything together it's not just a little bit of this or a little bit of that like yes you can do your yoga informed trauma or your trauma informed yoga and it's it's a very very good thing and you can do your talk therapy and it's a very very good thing but I feel like this this brings everything um everything that we can need to help liberate all of that stuff that's still gunking up our insides that's the way that that i could explain could you explain even more yeah, yeah so the killaby inquiry kind of has <clears throat> i would say the three pillars or what we call three dimensions of this particular work of processing somatic inquiry processing, but the first dimension is really focused on um, more of the non-dual part, meaning just life is and we are the beingness itself and everything that yoga and meditation and other mindfulness practices point to. But this time it's actually more skillful. How do we allow everything to be as it is? You know, it's a wonderful pointer, but it's not actual experience when we really stop because there's so much going on. So there's this first dimension where we are not prompting, but really practicing more the being the spaciousness to all of this to arise, to come and fall, to come and fall, and just realizing that we are not on none of the content that comes and goes. We are actually just the space that is aware of everything. So the first dimension uh, of this work, and then that's for sure is the foundation, and that's why this really works. Meaning, just being just in the head is not enough, but combining, con connecting body, mind, and awareness just moves things, right? So it's basically bringing the unconscious into conscious awareness. And that's when things start to kind of liberate. Now, second dimension, and it's really the Kilby inquiries, that's like the basics of this work. And it's like really fundamental as well. And it's like really the horizontal, clear, clearing all the the traumas and all the programming and really understanding the ego structure, meaning the body-mind survival mechanism. And this body-mind survival mechanism has all these wonderful uh, coping mechanisms that create so much suffering unconsciously. We don't even know, uh, not until we start looking, we don't even know what's really going on, what's really sabotaging our relationships, what really triggers us being around kids or any other situations or just in the crazy world that we're living in, what, what is it? that gets triggered within us. So there's a lot of deficiency stories on this level. So, and then now deficiency stories, they kind of bring us into more deeper work, which is repression. And they become like this lid on top of repressed emotions that we just had to say, 
a complete no in our childhood at some point. And we had to completely say complete no to being angry or being afraid was not okay or expressing ourselves was not okay. Any form of shape or form of being ourselves was not okay. And to a child, not much is needed. Just a very kind of intense fear kind of base uh, or anger based look from a parent would be enough to shut down in frozen fear inside and just unconsciously carry it, carry it around as like, oh, I can't be myself or I can't be happy. I was just happy. I was just so joyful and, and it was not okay. So we don't remember it, but everything gets stored. Well, and the so, point is on, on that, uh, I'll let you come back to the third dimension in okay. a second, but just to illustrate on that, on that point, a little look, and like, this is not to, like, obviously every parent ourselves as moms included, we're like, oh shit, this is therapy for, we're just trying to minimize the amount of time they spend sorting this out. But, but every little thing registers in them. That means every single one of us, whether we realize it or not, we all have trauma P point end of the story. So how do we, how do we use these methods to clear everything out to then be able to um, function and interact with other human beings in our full in, entirety of who we, who we are? Yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's basically that, you know, coming back to third dimension and this repression work, what tends to happen is like the opening of that brings us back to first the first dimension, meaning all of a sudden being here or meditating is not a chore anymore. It's just more quiet inside. It's just more peaceful inside, just to mm -hmm. be as we are, just to be here. And the same thing what opens up with like doing all this work the somatic processing and, and, and the inquiry and the investigation and the mind, mind, mining questions. So getting all that unconscious conscious, what starts to happen is we start to also moving energy, repressed energy. And it's finally, finally, this full permission of actually being me that starts to arise. Mm -hmm. So this particular method invites people not to bypass in a sense of it's not just transcendence, like from here and out of this world and, and like I have nothing to do with this world because I'm awareness or whatever it is. No, it's like being fully awake and fully human. And that's that's the only hope really for humanity, truly. No. Well, I don't, I don't know what to follow up after that kind of sentence. <laughs> that's the only hope. <laughs> really? We, we I really agree. I agree with you. That's where we're at. You. I mean, we we were thrown into right. this this topsy turvy world. I personally was not ready for it. I was not strong at all, and it blindsided me and sent me spiraling until until basically now, years later, being able to come out of that spiral and knowing that you know there are potentially still weird stuff going to happen ahead of us. So how do we become as as strong and uh, solid and sovereign as possible to kind of, you know, ground and, and root down and make sure that we can handle whatever weirdness is thrown at us. That's that. How do we keep the, keep the peace, but keep like have the internal peace for real this time. For me, it was, it was, I was able to keep a certain amount of peace in my life as long as the exterior was relatively okay. But when everything was, it was total insanity outside and around us, that's when internally everything starts to come up. And then I'm, I'm finding so much with the, with practicing the inquiries so much, it's like this purging and it's amazing, this lightness that myself and the, the whole group that's been, been studying with you this whole time, Alina, like we're just, it, you could just see the quality of like, it's like they're these pieces of us. Do you, you know what I mean? This feels so yeah. much, so much lighter and more amazing. And you, you see it. You see it in the people. You feel it in their energy. Yeah, for sure. So could it's could we um could we explain just in case it's a little bit vague? Because of course you're so immersed in it. For me, it's a big part of my life these days. But just to kind of like walk someone through what it, what it would look like, what it would be like to sit in a session with me or with you or with any other facilitator uh you're you're not necessarily coming with any any particular issue though sometimes you might be i don't know if you want to walk walk people through what a typical uh online session meeting would be like with a facilitator yeah yeah for sure so um yeah this is not a, a 
talk therapy. So the elements of KI, which is Kilby short for Kilby inquiries, the elements of KI, it's really direct experience. So it, that doesn't mean that past will not arise, but what, what tends to happen, the translation of the whole inner experience, and that's how it works. If we clo close our eyes, what we start to notice, if we really dissect how we experience reality internally, it will be words, pictures, and sensations, and energies. So like the mixture of, of energies and sensations kind of create, we can also say emotion, if, if you really kind of want to make it a little bit more broad, but memories arise as words and, and pictures. And in our bodies, we when we kind of get out of our head with the guidance as well, start learning how to get out of our head and kind of into the somatic realm of experiencing. So the somatic memory, so the body carries memory. And within that memory, there's gonna be kind of flaring out of discomfort, so to say. That's what we're trying to run away and distract ourselves with whatever eating or any other any other way to numb, not to feel. So this invitation is with these sessions is a guided kind of rest where I guide the person or whoever the facilitator would guide the person to start kind of in a meditative way, paying attention to their direct experience maybe given a little bit of context of what does it look like direct experience just given like okay paying attention just look to the sensations of support paying attention to the breath and the movement of the breath so you kind of start giving some hints to the person to land below their neck so what starts happening of course the person if it if the person comes with something we will start with the discovery. They would let me know, well, I want to work on this and this is what happened. And I'll get getting triggered every time. And so they probably already knows, know maybe a little bit of what, what they're looking for. And if not, it's totally okay. You don't have to come knowing. What, what arises, this method is geared into almost super sharp way of cut, cutting into and landing into unconscious. So what we're doing here is we're pulling stuff out of the unconscious and pulling and kind of dissecting or emptying the story, which feels like me, this kind of like this bundle of information that is attached to sensations. And it feels like me because it's about me and I, I'm maybe the invisible, the not validated me, whatever the deficiency story is. So this bundle feels like really, really true. So what starts happening when we empty it and we dissect it into words, pictures, and sensations and allow perhaps the, the trapped emotion also to come up. So there's a sense of, hmm, how would I say? A sense of disidentification slowly, slowly might start to arise. And it's a sense of purging might also start to arise. So there is a lot of people that experience more like an inner shaking or the, well, Jenny, you've experienced a little bit of nausea coming up. There's like a little bit kind of detoxing that might happen in the process. And it also might happen that there's so much story that a lot of stuff that's gonna start happening and we need to slow down because what happens, the whole point of this session is we stirring stuff up like we of course we also want to bring to the origin of why am i feeling what when did i feel this way this this invisible when did i feel invisible for the first time of course we want to find the origin when when did it happen and what carries the memory it's not like oh let me tell you when it happened the first time that's not about that it's more kind of an entranced almost like a hypnotic kind of session where the body tells you when it remembers that it happened. we can say for some some people will have one of one of the women was talking about like a a pain across the chest some people it comes and lands in the shoulder or in the neck and like you i have done i have done quite a few times and i told you this at the beginning of our training in december alina somatic experiencing with various people and i was never really able to feel a whole lot for various reasons maybe it was what was happening with with me um or with whatever externally 
Um, but we, we see now, I really, really understand, like it, it's hard, it's very hard to explain just like this to somebody who has never been sat there with somebody who knows what they're doing, walking them through the, pro well, I don't feel, I, now I don't feel anything. My eyes are closed and we're, my eyes are open and we're talking. But once a facilitator takes you into a quiet state, it is like, it is like incredible the things that you can, like, like Elena said, like I've actually almost vomited. Um, in in doing this because the stuff can I, I it, it really really surprised me how and it's not imagination this is not like oh you're created this is stuff is coming coming up <laughs> yeah, for sure well I've been like uh, allowing a lot of such repression that I, my whole body inside was shaken with that frozen fear of my mom's anger and it was just like of course, my, my mom, she's my best friend right now. I would never, ever think that I would, I'm carrying something like that within me. But this repressed anger and repressed fear was preventing me actually doing this, speaking in public, doing videos. I was not able to do that before, before coming to this work and discovering this and emptying everything. And I mean, we just have also an amazing testimony just within our group. Uh, we have a friend that just healed chronic pain in her hip just by facilitating her own session in the training and just being st still quite new to this but very intuitive of course she did a lot of work previously so it's 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 quite fascinating right so it's like we're 20, 10 years or something you have this chronic pain and this like this bothering debilitating um, state that you have and then you go and you find that well there's there's just all this repressed material that's been here and I needed to continue cre recreating unconsciously this pain so that I can, you know, like whatever, take a rest or something like that. I don't remember exactly her case, what was happening, but it's quite fascinating what we find. Yeah. Would you would you say that, um, so you mentioned chronic pain. We've talked a little bit about addiction, which I think might be the origins of the discovery of the Kilby. I got, I got this book. Um, I didn't read it. The receipt's still in there, but I did get it. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to go through it, but um, uh, so addiction, chronic pain. Uh, would you would you say that this there is anyone for whom this work would not be valuable? Like, is there any? I I will say I think that everybody, no matter how how together they think they have it, there is something very profound to discover in doing this work. Do you, do you think there's anybody that is, a, because you just said, right? You just said, oh, you just had a, and you've been doing this work for ages. And like Scott, who is the, the, one of the co-founders of this entire, he's now on this whole trip of all this new stuff. He, so on my side, I can't really see who could possibly be exempt from, from, yeah. I mean, unless you don't want to know, if you don't want to know, don't come to this work. If you're not ready to do the work, don't even you won't get anywhere right exactly that's exactly what I wanted to answer it's not about um you know who this work does not apply to like meaning like there's everyone like I I came with a really abiding for many years like a good 10 years prior to this work in non-dual established place presence right here and now you know I could just st stay here right here and now but that's not being human now being human is actually relating and relating brings about all this stuff that was not conscious to awareness because it's hidden it's unconscious so not to stir it up to have specific tools to kind of bring it up from the unconscious into conscious awareness only then things can start liberating and even still like as i'm saying i'm finding like with repressed fear right now like this frozen fear so now you exactly answered your question it's like it's more about who's ready for this and that doesn't mean like you're different than you are. It's just the readiness comes in this like an inner saturation and fed upness of suffering. Mm -hmm. Fed upness. Check. And really, we connected. I, I We're still trying to piece together maybe the birth community in Montreal. But we connected pre-pandemic and you were already doing that. And like I, I had no idea what this was about. I had bought that book on your <laughs> advice and like I'm looking through it and I have no I it's like it might as well be Chinese I had no idea and that happens we don't always understand unless we're unless we're there so 
Um, I mean, there are people who turned on this video who've already turned the video off and that's fine. <laughs> but for anybody who's still watching, it's highly likely that they're registering enough to say like, oh yeah, actually that, that speaks to me. There's something, there's something that I can see would, would be helpful for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think for anyone, I would say anyone who is actually genuinely curious of about more freedom or just being more at ease in their skin, so to say, mm. forget about enlightenment, even forget about that. That's also possible. But just being more human, just being more open, just what for me helped so much with just this social anxiety, the, 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 the public speaking anxiety, there was just intense PTSD and trauma around this. And I couldn't, I really couldn't. So for me, just, just even that, to be able to mm -hmm. finally mm -hmm. do what I really want to do, like for someone, it, and it doesn't have to be big. Okay. For me, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. I'm in the videos right now well big deal for someone it's not for someone else it would be maybe a, a minor thing to be in a relationship but it's more harmonious but we're constantly attracting this terrible you know kind of uh, how do I say relationships that are constantly showing us mirroring back to us the deficiency story I'm not good enough I'm not lovable and we that's what we are unconsciously going to be attracting so I would say it's like for anyone who's actually really deeply is curious and can commit to this work because it's not a, a you know, there's this perfect magic pill and that you swallow and everything. We really actually need to do the work, meaning we need to be have sessions facilitated by a facilitator or we need to take a training to learn the tools and start applying for, for ourselves and just have that peer support. So it is an involvement and it is certain to a certain degree a path until it becomes a lifestyle mm, and a lifestyle well said. more of like a new way of seeing internally our whole mechanisms of being human and it's just having that spaciousness to start having choices where before we didn't you know so that's pretty much everyone is welcome <laughs> if you have the willingness um, thank you i mean obviously we could we could talk for a long time on the subject, but I think that resumed. I'm, I'm so happy. Thank you. I feel like that resumed um, kind of all of the elements that I was hoping to help people understand, even myself getting clear around how I want to work because we feel it so much. And when you're, like I said, immersed in it, it can be a little bit difficult to then put put words to it. But I, I think you did that justice. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, I will see you. See you very soon. We see each other on, on the Zoom often enough and I'm so grateful. And and it really was when you said cross paths, you you appeared this Christmas time at like I had actually, for whatever reason, asked for the Byron Katie book, the work, like kind of out of out of nowhere. And I had received it for Chris. Like I was in this in this mindset and I had I had brought this book with me to British Columbia I and I hadn't, I hadn't spoken to you in years, like throughout the whole pandemic. And I don't, I had put out a call literally like, I, I don't know what is going on right now, but somebody has got to help me figure it out. And then you just appeared on my feed out of nowhere. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so that's much what, for everything. That's what thank happens <laughs> with this Did work. You, it's it did you yeah there's no uh, there's no coincidences that's for sure did you want to quickly um not quickly you can take your time if you want but just say your your website name in case people um so i'll just remind uh, like we said at the beginning of the video i'm uh i'm at the towards the end of the training with alina and killaby inquiries and i'm i'm looking for some uh, some guinea pigs so i'll do some free sessions as well as some discounted sessions in the upcoming weeks and months um, I would like to have people who are relatively committed to doing kind of like if you if you do one session and you hate it, fine. But to to have anybody who's going to uh, write to me saying that they're interested in uh, working with me, I would I would like some kind of continuity to to see what we can get into. Um, so there's that offering from me, some free guinea pigs as well as some discounted guinea pigs. And then if you want the real very mastered practice deal, Alina can tell you her. <laughs> For information yeah. well thank you so much jenny and um yeah there's a few things kind of few little announcements um one that i do have uh, running 
personal mentorship group training that uh, that you've been taking right now, Jenny. And there's actually two last spots available, which I want to fill out maybe in this this week and maximum next week, next coming week. Um, and I probably I don't know where, but maybe we can type. Uh, I can give a link. Somewhere Please, to yeah. Thank you. That. And on my my website, you could probably also find it through my website, which is Alina. It's A L I N A, Pantelev, P A N T E E P, Pantelev. <laughs> Maybe E E L E V E. Uh, E-E-V, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been switching here to Spanish, <laughs> spelling my I names. I understand. <laughs> anyway, so um, alinapantelev.com. And there's on top, you can find train with me and then you'll find the training. It, it will go to kilaby.com and the, the, you, the whole information and how to sign up is there. Or you can reach out for a clarity call. And you can book the clarity call on my website as well. And just um, it would be nice to meet you if whoever is serious and would like to kind of just try it out. You can just try it out just one session and see how it feels, if it suits you and so on. So thank you so much, Jenny. Uh, well, yeah, one last time, what's some, something is exciting happening. And I am doing a mini summer retreat, weekend summer retreat, Kill the Inquiry summer retreat. And it's going to be in New York State in mid-July. So even for those Canadians who are close to Montreal, it's about four hours drive or something like that. So it's not that bad. That would be amazing. So real people, real hugs. and, and real I'm going to check my schedule. Maybe I'll meet you there. That sounds yeah, amazing. That'll be, yeah, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> Thank you okay, so, so we'll, write, we'll write all that information down where this is posted. And thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Or today it looks it looks sunny in Mexico. Okay, talk to you soon. Thank you. Everybody. All right. Take good Bye. care. Bye. Thank you.